Hey guys, in this video, I'm putting the joinery of my current project under the microscope a little bit and showing a method for success that anybody can do. By learning how to level up the basic dado joint, you really unlock unlimited forms of basic carcass construction, even without the traditional dovetails or mortise and tenon. I grouped together both side pieces and put a knife nick to mark for the dado. I'm using a stop dado, so I'll mark that with a pencil and try not to go past that point with the knife. With one wall of the dado knifed, I'll transfer knife nick around to the front edge of the board. I set the board in place and for now just use a pencil line for the other side of the dado. I set the marking gauge to an eighth of an inch and use that to mark the floor of the dado. And a setting of three eighths of an inch to mark a setback from the front edge. The dado is formed by chiseling into the knife line and deepening that by chopping down. Alternate between those two procedures until you reach final depth. The board is set against the new dado wall and a knife nick is used to mark for the opposing wall. Knife the second wall on the inside of the dado. Knifing on the other side of the square would give a slightly enlarged dado. Use the same series of chiseling and chopping to bring this to the depth mark. Most of the waste can then be removed with a chisel, starting bevel up, and then switching to bevel down. A stop cut just before the step back will help avoid blowing out that front edge. And finally, a router plane is set to the final depth mark and skims this down to final depth. To square the front edge, I do a series of chiseling on the sidewalls and front edge, getting closer and closer until directly on the marking gauge line. Test fit into the dado, but don't mark it yet. I ended up cutting off my letter A. I gauge one inch from both edges on the inside. And after penciling the walls from the front edge knife nicks, I do the same gauge lines on the front. Next, I'll go an inch and a half further for a setting of two and a half inches on the gauge. And again, mark from both edges on the back and both edges on the front. With these distances defined, I set the knife into the knife nicks from earlier and mark with the knife in between each set of lines. And again, I flip the board around here so that my knife is marking on the inside section of the dado. You guys have seen me chop similar joints, but that can be difficult for new woodworkers. The method I'm about to show is what I did before I felt comfortable chopping accurate mortises. It takes longer than chopping a mortise, but the trade-off is that it gives predictable, clean, accurate results every single time. I start by simply extending the dado from the inside approximately halfway through. As this gets a little bit deeper, I find it easier to chisel bevel down than to pare away bevel up. Next, flip and from the front, again extend a dado not quite halfway through. And now at this point we will work down the long grain section with a series of chisel cuts, still trying to stay just a little bit away from the gauge line. The long grain pairs out super easily and you will end up with a couple of pyramid shaped waist sections. Keep working the long grain from both sides until the chisel goes through. Then just finish removing the waste by chopping on the cross grain section. The final step on these is just to pare down on the long grain section right up to the gauge lines. Go halfway down from the front and then finish by going halfway down from the back.
comes out so darn clean, my sidewalls would never be that clean if I chopped it out like a normal mortise. Now I need a mark out for the tenons, so I lock that in the vise and seed it into the dado. I want my tenons to protrude by an eighth of an inch. This dado is an eighth of an inch deep, so I'll set my marking gauge to the side thickness. If I wanted the tenons flush, I'd set the gauge to the floor of the dado. This is the tenon, this is the waist, I want to saw on the waist side of the line. Tenon, waist. After sawing down the lines, I'll use a coping saw to remove the center waist. I use a knife over that gauge line, flick out a little bit of waist, and saw off the shoulder. First I chop away from the line, then reinforce my gauge line with a knife, and then chop halfway down directly on the line. Flip it around and repeat the same to complete the cut. I choke up on my chisel so that the chisel doesn't go down into the bench. I try to fit it and it is not going to budge. So check this out, I take it apart and I look at the tenon, you can clearly see where it's too tight. Just use a chisel to pare that off. We already know the board fits in the dado, so only the sides of these tenons will possibly need paring down. Gonna assemble the joint and then mark the perimeter of the protruding tenon with a sharp pencil. The chamfer can be done several ways. I prefer the control and visibility of using a chisel. Careful not to go past the pencil line because that will cause it to look like a gap. I'm totally thrilled with this joint. 